So what happened during the time of the articles? What occurred between the states? If you heard anything about the articles in school, you probably got the impression because the only people that are read in this, if, if at all, are textbooks or uh, James Madison, uh, people who, who were unsatisfied. And while that's part of the story, there are some problems with just that side of the story that elites like James Madison, who wanted to move toward a more national government political state system, of course, they're going to be dissatisfied with the articles because the, the government of the articles offers no power that they feel is necessary to accomplish the things they want to accomplish. Did someone asked me the other day, why did the articles fail? And I said, the articles didn't fail. We have to define that in a careful way. Maybe they were a failure to, to some, like James Madison or others who were watching these things and wanted government to be a different way. But defining failure and success, well, according to, to what? Relative to what goals? If we mean fail, as in did they fail in regard to following up the Amer American Revolution and relative peace between the states, some expected you know, conflicts here and there, some problems that would continue to exist and states maintaining their independence and continuing to operate along with all the problems of the world normally has, then no, the articles didn't fail. The states are still free and independent. They are making progress in many ways, some of which I'll mention in just a minute. So the articles failed or didn't fail according to the expectation of their goal. Their goal is to maintain a loose alliance, uh, a, a league between the states that are on a team in case of a war, but otherwise are independent then no, they didn't fail. If they are meant to install a national government with pervasive powers to accomplish all sorts of goals and to solve all sorts of problems, then yes, they did fail. If they fail, if the expectation was that they would undo or prevent normal problems that would exist between the states or solve everything, then sure, they did fail. But those that's where we have to define that thing is uh, often in textbooks or other things that well-meaning educators have come in with an assumption that they don't often know that they're making. And they'll ask a loaded question. Why did the articles fail? Well, the articles didn't fail. If you're probably the average American, there's hardly an awareness of the articles or the Congress of the articles. And that's a good thing in many cases. And some bring up the case that, you know, there's, there's still these problems. The states are having issues. There's different currencies. Some states are having even conflict with one another. There's some internal rebellion in, in states, which is Shay's uh, rebellion is a kind of tipping point for George Washington, even though, as we'll see, these these things are not major national crises. They're just things that happen all the time. They would happen under the Constitution. They would they happened before. And so these things are going to continue to occur. And while, yes, there could be some argument for figuring out these details, it doesn't mean that the time of the articles, as many assume, was was chaotic and destructive and that what all that was needed was one government to come in and coerce the states into order. No, this is not what's going on. Well, often to give some help with uh, historical methodology, but also 
just argumentation and philosophy in general is often what can be created is called the nirvana fallacy. And the nirvana fallacy is an error in logical thinking, but it what it does is it takes an imaginary perfection and it compares something in the real world, like the Articles of Confederation, and it says the Articles of Confederation doesn't meet perfection. It didn't solve every problem that ever, ever existed. Therefore, it fails. And it defines failure by that metric in one way. But then it takes something else, like the Constitution, and it compares the Constitution not to perfection, compares it to just standing on its own. So you compare one thing to perfection, it inevitably fails because nothing is perfect. And then you compare, bring in something else and don't apply the same standard evenly. And this is called the Nirvana fallacy. Um, and people often do it with themselves. They compare others to perfection and then want sympathy for themselves. Um, and understanding for themselves. That's kind of a nirvana fallacy in a personal way. So here's some things that were going on in the States during the time. Were they all just going nuts? Were they all going crazy? Well, what was happening within them? Well, all the states except South Carolina and Georgia had passed some form of laws to stop the slave trade. That's a move in progress. So moving along with the changing tide of the time with regard to what Britain is eventually going to do with William Wilberforce and others will work to bring the slave trade to an end, the Atlantic slave trade. There's still an Eastern slave trade that's going to be going on. But 11 out of 13 passed these laws to stop the slave trade. And a lot of the states, as will shortly take place later under the Constitution, others will, will start ending slavery on their own. They will put plans in place to bring slavery to extinction. Now it's going to start to become more of a sectional thing where it will be concentrated in the South as opposed to the North, and there are reasons for that. But this is a significant step forward in progress. Here's something about the later constitution. The later constitution has a fugitive slave clause and has the clause not to close the slave trade till 1807 for 20 years. So comparing it to the later constitution, and we can't speculate about what didn't happen and then speculate an imaginary future that would have happened if things had been different. However, states were, <clears throat> a majority of states were making progress to end the slave trade. The constitution required that the slave trade be left open for another 20 years, and it's not closed down until the presidency of Thomas Jefferson in 1807. So, what would have happened, nobody knows, but you can see these states moving in one direction and the constitution actually puts a halt to that progress. And when it joins together in a more uh, coercive union, you have the states joining together instead of an alliance or a team, the fugitive slave laws written, which means that bordering states and any state that has slaves in it that have escaped from slave states must legally return them. Now you have, you know, states being in a union rather than just a confederation. Now you have a requirement for them to operate according to the rules of the federal government. Rules of the federal government now require that the free states subsidize the cost of slave states by enforcing slavery by sending slaves back. And so this is another problem of, of the Constitution. And not that we want to apply the Nirvana fallacy to the Constitution and say, well, it didn't meet perfection either. But you can see that there are some things that the articles in which the articles had an edge 
possibly on the Constitution. Again, the Constitution would protect the slave trade until 1808, would not allow it to be abolished. Criminal codes in the states became more humane. Property qualifications for voting were starting to change over time. So the idea that you had to own property to vote started to be adjusted slowly and over time. Um, and there's some debate about you know why that was and, and what uh, what the benefits and costs are of, of doing things that way rather than just free citizens having the right to vote. Uh, charities and mutual aid societies were started. So the states were taking care of the poor, the needy, or they were trying to, not the states themselves, not their governments, but people within them. They were figuring things out. Mutual aid societies are groups that pool resources together to work with things. That kind of, it's kind of like insurance. It's kind of like uh, if somebody has a, a hardship within their family, it, it would groups who had paid into this system uh, would be able to take out. And so it, these worked for a long time and were a way that a lot of people today haven't even heard of, of figuring out charity and things like that, of uh, sudden expensive crises that are that happen with people. Schools were founded, so people started schools, which had been a big thing in America as well, as the literacy had been increasing. And especially in the North, the Puritans, with such a focus on reading, wanted to establish schools. Now, what were the problems? We're going to get to this in another video, but there were problems. They, there was definitely not perfection during this time, but were the problems to the level or would the expectation be that a more centralized national government would solve these things? For people often say, well, if there's just a confederation of states or states just sharing the same colony, they're always gonna go to war with each other. They're gonna be a civil war. And a civil war, though, by definition, is a competition of at least two factions within a government trying to gain power of the, the national government, the centralized government, in order to con get control. And so technically that wouldn't be a civil war. But yes, they could go to war and that, that happened. There were wars in Europe. There are all sorts of things. However, keep in mind that under the Constitution in the United States, there is eventually a civil war anyway. So bringing states together into a union where, this is another topic, where they do are blocked in, at least according to one theory of the Constitution during that time, that can also create the conditions that lead to civil war. You have two competing sides of the country trying to control the federal government in order to coerce the other side of the country and then secession and all sorts of things that could happen with that, that could also create the conditions that would be ripe for a civil war. But what were the problems and what led to the, the change that took place? So did the articles fail? Well, not necessarily. Depends on how we define the standard of success and failure.